Back in 2020, while a good majority of the world sat in lockdown binging on Tiger King and getting festively plump, another group of people were quietly ramping up their insidious work. In a time where not much was happening outside in the real world, Hackers increased their online activities by over 600%. Crypto jacking, malware, ransomware attacks, and phishing scams in particular all blew up. So who got hacked in 2020? What damage was done? And why are we still getting tricked by half-baked phishing scams in 2020? We've compiled a top 10 list of the biggest hacks in 2020, and we'll walk you through them now. Hey, I'm Rob Witcher. In this What the Hack video series, we explore some of the biggest cybersecurity breaches in modern history. If you find cybersecurity as fascinating as I do, then please subscribe and hit the bell icon to get notifications when we release new videos. When you imagine a stereotypical hacker, most people assume a pasty figure in a gray hoodie furiously typing away at a keyboard at 3,000 words per minute to break into the mainframe. Sounds like a synopsis of Mr. Robot. The truth, however, is a little less dramatic. Your friendly neighborhood hacker probably looks like any other vitamin D deficient computer enthusiast. And instead of a sustained targeted attack, Oftentimes, a hacker only needs to write the initial code once, sit back, and wait for an unsuspecting victim. Internet users over the age of 60 account for a quarter of all money stolen by cyber attacks each year. And 2020 was no exception. More than 4,000 attacks occurred each day of the year, bringing the total number of the year up to an excess of 1.5 million attacks in total. And with the global pandemic forcing many folks to set up makeshift home offices, this has provided hackers with easy pickings, with phishing and other fraudulent mail scams that target home computer users skyrocketing from 12% to 60% over the course of the year. But the real money is in data. There's been a huge spike in attacks that target medical and financial institutions, with the rate of ransomware attacks quadrupling during 2020. The medical industry has the highest average volume of compromised files per breach at 113,491, where the financial sector has the highest average cost of attack at $18.3 million per breach. There have also been some huge, well-publicized hacks on large companies during 2020. And here is our top 10 list. In May of 2020, Wishbone had its entire cache of user records stolen and leaked from a compromised database. For those who don't know Wishbone, it's an app where users will post side-by-side -side comparison for other users to vote in a poll. Over 70% of the user's 40 million users are under the age of 18, and reportedly over 80% of all users are female. So what we're talking about here is a heck of a lot of female minors' private details being sold off to the highest bidder. Criminals made off with names, email addresses, usernames, phone numbers, users' real-world location, gender, social media profiles, and hashed passwords. The Shiny Hunters Hacker Group posted the database for sale on Raid Forum, a popular data leak marketplace. The price was 0.85 bitcoins, or roughly $8,000. It's unclear exactly how the attackers gained access to the Wishbone systems, but one of the major problems they found when they did was that the hashed passwords were hashed using MD5. Well, MD5 can still be used for quick data integrity verification, and it absolutely should not be used to hash user passwords. The MD5 hashing algorithm has been deemed unsafe for over a decade. Tis tisk wishbone. They should have been using much better hashing algorithms such as SHA-256, SHA-3, Bcrypt, or Argon2. Although the breach technically occurred over the summer of 2019, MGM Resorts didn't publicly announce to their customers that their systems were compromised until February of 2020. Even then, this was only because customer details had begun to appear for sale on the dark web, and cybersecurity firms started to ask questions about how the data was stolen. Initially, MGM Resorts refused to disclose which details had been compromised, but did say that 10.6 million users' private information was now up for sale. By July of 2020, that number had exploded, increasing by 14 times to a whopping 142 million users affected across the globe. News broke that hackers had access to the works, full names, addresses, phone numbers, email addresses, dates of birth, etc. Access to MGM's resort systems had come via Night Lion Security, a company tasked with maintaining their cybersecurity. Talk about embarrassing. Nightline Security's data leak monitoring service, Data Viper, was the weak link. Chatter on Russian message boards indicates that the Russian-based hacker group Cozy Bear may have been responsible, and that the number of affected users may actually exceed 200 million. For this attack, Cozy Bear claimed responsibility, 
after it made repeated attacks against the European Medical Agency in December of 2020. In this attack, it was data related to the Pfizer vaccine that they were after. Although details are hazy, it appears that Cozy Bear employed a number of techniques to gain access to the EMA's servers. It seems targeted spear phishing attacks were used to obtain genuine login credentials. Once access was obtained, Golang-based malware WellMess was installed to execute arbitrary shell commands, as well as upload and download further data between the EMA servers and various third-party servers. It's unclear how this data was used. While many believe that other biotech companies may have used it to speed up their own vaccine development, other people whose fashion choices involve well-fitted tinfoil hats are convinced it was stolen to create dangerous vaccine alternatives for the new world order. Pretty conspiratorial stuff. Back in February 2020, in easily one of the biggest data breaches of the year, a major attack on Estee Lauder's network led to a massive 440 million customer records being stolen from their database. At least some, if not all, contained plain text information like email addresses, names, and phone numbers. Worst of all, the database itself wasn't even password protected. The stolen data had been uploaded with no encryption and no access control protections, a literal freebie for would-be hackers and scammers. The unencrypted and unprotected files were essentially used as middleware by the company to manage systems like internal and external automated messages as well as account authentications. Since the initial breach, it appears there's been multiple attempts to use stolen information and credentials to create backdoors into the Estee Lauder systems, for future compromises no doubt. A company that rakes in almost 15 billion in revenue every year should probably spend a little bit more on cybersecurity and the safekeeping of their sensitive customer records. And there often seems to be a contradiction in this industry that the companies with the most data to protect are often the worst at protecting that data. That's true for the US's third biggest cellular provider, T-Mobile, who has an atrocious track record in regards to data breaches. They were the target of not one but two attacks in 2020 in March and again in December, bringing the total breaches to four in just the past three years. In both 2020 hacks, hackers gained access to the T-Mobile corporate network and gave themselves administrative privileges by using employee login credentials. It's thought that phone numbers, names, addresses, and call-related information were all stolen as part of these breaches. Though T-Mobile would neither confirm which data was compromised nor how many users had been affected. U.S. convenience chain Wawa was in deep water at the start of 2020, when over 30 million payment records, including credit card details, popped up for sale on the dark web marketplace, Joker's Bazaar. Despite becoming aware of the breach in January, it's believed the actual hack happened nine months prior. Unbeknownst to Wawa, malware had been installed on the point of sale machines in its 850 nationwide stores across the U.S., each time a customer would pay for gas or groceries, their name, credit card number, and expiration dates were recorded and sent to some third-party server somewhere. As a result of the breach, Wawa directed all franchises to install end-to-end -end data encryption, exclusively use smart chip-enabled point-of-sale hardware, and install security cameras. Wawa made it clear that neither the PIN numbers nor the three-digit CVV security code printed on the back of the cards were included in the leaked information, but it was enough to prompt a massive wave of card cancellations and replacements. Another December 2020 cyber attack, and this time it was cybersecurity firm FireEye who had to make the hard announcement that it had been targeted. In a rather bitter twist of fate, penetration tools created and used by FireEye to test their clients' security were commandeered to gain access to FireEye's own systems. The company has said that the attack was highly organized and showed an elite level of know-how, pointing to the possibility that it was a state-sponsored hacker group like perhaps Cozy Bear. FireEye has been tight-lipped on the details, but they did note that the combination of techniques used to carry out the cyber breach has never been seen before by cyber forensic experts. FireEye's assessment tools that mimic the behavior of hackers and identify vulnerabilities and threats have led to the development of many countermeasures for their clientele. And it's not known to what degree these countermeasures have now been compromised as well, and therefore to what extent their customers are now vulnerable because of this attack. On December 14th, a whole bunch of Google services went down, including Gmail, Google Suite, YouTube, Google Maps, and many others. It was a global outage that lasted roughly 45 minutes, which is an eternity for a company that is considered one of the giants of the internet. Google announced to users that they were aware of the problem and were working on a solution. 
adding that the cause was likely to be an internal storage quota issue. Speculation was rife about who perpetrated this attack. One cybersecurity expert suggested it was Russian intelligence-backed actors, while another claiming it was the equivalent of the 9-11 of cybersecurity. There's really no other publicly available details on this hack right now, so this maybe hack is a bit of a mystery. The internal storage quota explanation was proven to be phony, with questions being raised about what really happened over at Google and what it could mean for millions of users worldwide. We'll create a more detailed video on this one if more details are revealed. In May of 2020, Nintendo had a rather embarrassing attack. Hackers broke into Nintendo users' accounts, stole their credit card information, and then used that stolen payment information to go on a spending spree of illegitimate purchases. Nintendo used a login method they called NNID, short for Nintendo Network ID. It's used for the 3DS handheld gaming devices, Wii U, and Switch consoles to allow users to download purchased content to either platform through a shared purchased content wallet. The malicious party had spoofed access to users' accounts that used the same login credentials between their NNID and Nintendo website accounts. It's unclear exactly how they obtained Nintendo website usernames and passwords, but we can probably guess here. Because they had the user's NNID, many users probably used the same password on the Nintendo website as they did for their NNID, allowing the attackers to then compromise customers' website account on Nintendo and get their credit card information. Initially, Nintendo attempted to downplay the incident, stating that 160,000 accounts were broken into. However, later, it was revealed that the number of actual affected users was nearly double that, over 300,000. Some users have claimed to have over $500 in purchases made on their credit cards. Nintendo responded by temporarily suspending users' accounts, sending affected users password reset emails, and strongly advising their users to use two-factor authentication for their accounts. In arguably the biggest cyber attack of the year, SolarWinds was targeted by Russian hackers, giving them the backdoor key to the data of literally billions of people. For those that don't know SolarWinds, it's an IT company that provides support for many of the world's governing bodies as well as Fortune 500 companies around the world. The list includes the Office of the President of the United States, the Secret Service, the Department of Defense, NASA, Microsoft, MasterCard, Visa, Lockheed Martin, and even the Golden Arches, McDonald's. SolarWinds are the big boys in cyber tech. In December, SolarWinds faced embarrassment and some serious backlash from their customers by announcing that hackers had embedded their own exploit code into a service update that found its way onto all customers' computers and networks. Cybersecurity experts have called this the biggest hack of all time. A malicious group appears to have had access to classified and sensitive files in all of these customers for months before being found. This was yet another cyber attack that had a distinct Russian feel to it. No wonder President Joe Biden told President Vladimir Putin that certain critical infrastructure should be off limits to cyber attacks during the meeting they had in Geneva on June 16th. It's thought that way back in March of 2020, hackers first broke into SolarWinds systems and installed a backdoor. The hackers then engineered a backdoor that was included into SolarWinds update to over 33,000 customers. The sad truth is that companies are struggling to keep up with new and innovative cyber attacks and hacking methods. It's a never-ending game of catch-up. If you found this video interesting and informative, then please hit the thumbs up button so we know you like this type of content. And let us know in the comments what breaches you want us to cover in the future. See you in the next one.